somebody <laughs> asked me once in an event they said das ji aap to muskurate rehte hain hamesha ye keval camera pe hota hai ki camera ke piche bhi hota hai <laughs> now if you were to use a term in sanskrit for a cigarette hmm. what would you say you would say shweta patra mandita dhumra shalaka har ghadi बदल रही है रूप जिंदगी छाव है कहीं कहीं है धूप जिंदगी हर पल यहाँ जी भर जियो जो है समा कल हो ना हो <laughs> क्या हुआ नौकरी नहीं मिली कि छोकरी नहीं मिली वेन यू आर एब्सोल्यूटली इंसेंटली मैडली इन लव विथ समथिंग You don't look at the risks. Manzil milegi, bhatakkari sahi. Manzil milegi, bhatakkari sahi. Gumra to hoa jo ghar se nikle hi nahi. Jaise maine pehle bola, pyar hota hai to sab chal jata hai. Aur jab sachchaiya dikhne lagti hai, tab pata lagta hai re, ye to pehle di socha tha. The sign of a genius is not in making simple things complicated. it's in making complicated things simple, simple yes. right so god ji you're a best selling author a life coach and i think the one of the most famous monks in the world today right but who is the real gor gopal das how do you see yourself who are you okay thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> Here it goes. <laughs> a very good afternoon to you, ladies and gentlemen. You don't sound very happy seeing me. A very good afternoon to you, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, let's make some noise, guys. <laughs> It's a great privilege, pleasure, and honor to be here. First of all, and I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to Jaipur Literature Festival for having me over, and my sincerest gratitude to every single one of you. we've taken your valuable time on a monday afternoon to listen to a bald monk like me give yourselves a loud round of applause guys <laughs> and what a pleasure and honor to be here thank in you. conversation with punita ji thank, thank you so much thank you uh, there's a god gopal das whom the world knows and the question she's asking is who is the god gopal das that you are yes the real the well, real god gopal das stand up please <laughs> somebody asked me once in an event they said das ji aap to muskurate rehte hain hamesha ye keval camera pe hota hai ki camera ke piche bhi hota hai <laughs> well i can say camera ke piche bhi hota hai the little time i've spent with you so so who is the real god gopal das ji right for me i have always identified with one thing in my life and that one thing that i have identified with is being a servant a servant a, a das servant a das right that's what my name name says gor gopal das to serve to serve to try and help to add value hmm. to try and see if i can make a tiny little difference in the lives of people because at the end of the day what really matters is how do we touch a life achievements accolades popularity fame numbers will all be forgotten right what will be remembered at the end of the day is how we deeply touched a heart now sanskrit is an amazing language mm. because in sanskrit strong words can seem very soft okay like if you want to call someone a donkey <laughs> in sanskrit you would say vaishakanandan Not gada. <laughs> Not gada. किसी को बोलिएगा हे वैशाख नंदन उसको लगेगा कि आप उस पर कविता की रचना कर रहे हैं नीज डोंडी हु प्रेजेंट दे हर्ड इट बट यू कुड डेफिनेटली ट्राई इट ऑन समबडी वेन यू गो आउट ट्राई इट दिस इवनिंग दे गोन टू फील फ्लैटर्ड वेन यू से हे वैशाख नंदन Now, if you were to use a term in Sanskrit for a cigarette, hmm. what would you say? You would say Shweta, Patra, Mandita, Dhumra, Shalaka. <laughs> if you were to say an ice cream, what would you say? How do you call an ice cream? 
we would say dugdha sharkara yukta hima ganagola gattu we would order mango ice cream we would say amra dugdha sharkara yukta hima ganagola gattu anaya the ice cream would melt by the time you would order it such a huge term to use ice cream but i often s- reaching to the yeah. sanskrit version of who you are yes i'm yes. no no i'm telling you about it you know when you're talking about an ice cream <laughs> The philosophy behind the ice cream is enjoy your life before it melts. Right? And yeah. life will melt away, guys. Life will melt away, isn't it? Har ghadi badal rahi hai roop zindagi Chhaav hai kahi, kahi hai dhoop zindagi Har pal yaha Jee bhar jiyo Jo hai sama <laughs> Enjoy your life before yeah. it melts, isn't it? Yeah. But then you have another contrasting the ice cream, you have a candle. And the philosophy behind the candle is give light to others before it melts. And ice cream melts and a candle melts. And ice cream is about enjoy your life and candle is about enlighten others' lives. Now I can't be a candle self, uh, completely selfless. right and nor should i be an ice cream completely selfish okay i don't want to be selfish i don't want to be selfless i want to be selfishly selfless where i care for myself in a way that i can serve others so the gor gopal das ji in real is an ice cream who likes to care for himself so that one day he can try and be a candle to serve and bring light to others wow. thank you oh thank you thank you thank you I would say actually you are already a candle. Oh, I'm trying my best, ma'am. Honestly, honestly, thank you. But uh, I have been actually trying. To, um, it's an answer to something I've been looking for. So you've been an electrical engineer. You've been in the corporate world with Hewlett Packard. What made you embrace monkhood? I mean, what was that trigger? What was the catalyst? Because even if you were on your own path, there have been gurus, spiritual leaders who have been householders. but you decided to embrace celibacy and monkhood would is it too personal or can you no, share the journey all. with us a question that i get asked everywhere i go not personal yeah, at all man yeah okay a question i get everywhere kya hua naukri nahi mili ki chokri nahi mili something like that yes <laughs> something like that people think you turn to monkhood because dal nahi gali <laughs> you were frustrated you were disappointed you had no nothing in life left so you embraced monkhood here's how here's what i say usually how many of you work a job brilliant how many of your students oh wow how many of wow. you are looking forward to a brilliant promising career in the future oh brilliant how many of you are absolutely a 200% aware that there's going to be immense pressures when you start working a job brilliant brilliant you can imagine there was a poultry farm ma'am ha <laughs> and the poultry farm owner came to the poultry farm and said to all the hen main tumko roz dana dalta hu itna tum din ka do do hi anda dalti ho matlab koi proportion hai अगले मंडे से दस दस अंडे चाहिए वेलकम टू द कॉर्पोरेट वर्ल्ड दैट्स कॉल्ड परफॉर्मेंस प्रेशर दैट्स कॉल्ड परफॉर्मेंस प्रेशर यू वांट हाइक्स यू वांट हायर रेटिंग्स अंडा डालो सो दिस नेक्स्ट मंडे ऑल द हेन वर लिंग टेन एक्स बिकॉज दे मेट टुगेदर वन हेन सेट टू द अदर हेन आई सेंट माई चेक रिसेंटली टू ये लोन्स टू पे द अदर हेन सेट आई जस्ट परचेज एन अपार्टमेंट इन मलबार इन मुंबई mortgages and loans right no choice 10 andas because we need the grains except for one poor fellow was laying only one egg so the poultry farm poultry farm owner yelled and shouted and said look at your colleagues they are laying 10 eggs and you are laying only one ye bola khuda ka shukar karo main ek dal raha hu warna murga hu main oh <laughs> i'll tell you what Okay. under per- <laughs> under performance pressure roosters have to lay eggs okay <laughs> and roosters have to lay egg as in they have to do what they are not cut for right i travel the world and counsel corporate professionals hmm 
And the one thing I hear all the time is, we are being paid very well, but we don't feel fulfilled in what we do. Right. Is a job just meant to pay, or is a job also meant to fulfill? You're going to spend the majority of your time at work. In the morning, a couple of hours at home, in the evening, a couple of hours at home, and the rest of the day at work. If the majority of your time is going to be going at work, should you just be doing that's giving you something that's going to give, pay you well, or also something that's going to fulfill you? Absolutely. So when I was working a job at Hewlett Packard, the one question I asked myself is, do I see myself doing this for the rest of my life? Right. I'm great at it. Absolutely phenomenal at it. I'm like absolutely smashing it. But do I see myself doing this for the rest of my life? And the answer was a loud, clear no. Right. I cannot because this doesn't fulfill me. Hmm. So the question was, what fulfills me? Hmm. I didn't want to work with machines and systems. Hmm. I preferred working with people. Right. So obviously the choices were to study psychiatry, study psychology, HR, yes, study yeah. behavioral economics, right. organizational behavior, all to do with people. Yeah. And then I also found I had a spiritual calling. Mm -hmm. So I decided, could I find answers to the human condition in spirituality? Right. Which is when that, that twist came to my life that I said, okay, let me explore answers to life in spirituality where I combine my passion and my calling together. I did take an uncalculated risk. Yeah, it's like jumping off the deep end. Jumping Absolutely. off the yeah. fence. Yeah, yeah. Took an uncalculated risk and youngsters who are listening to me here, please do not take uncalculated risks because you have real life family needs out there. Yeah. I was insane. I did it. But sometimes when you're mad, how many people have loved you? Sabko hua hai. Sabko hua hai. Kitne loon ka heart break hua hai toh haath utha? Sabka hua hai. Kya baat hai? Kya baat hai? Oh my God. Shhh. Hoo. Ishq satcha wahi Jisko milti nahi Manzile Manzile And you follow Bollywood. Wow. So, when you are absolutely, insanely, madly in love with something, you don't look at the risks. Do this you? is like Meera by talking. Huh? In a way, you yes. don't look at the risks. Yes. That's why love is blind. Marriage is the eye-opener. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, all the risks that you took, you didn't see anything. You didn't see compatibility. You didn't see natures. You didn't see anything. You jumped into it. Andhaishk. And then suddenly reality dawns when you start sharing personal space with each other. And bathrooms. And bathrooms. <laughs> and you start seeing the littlest things in each other. It looks like it's a little bit faster. So when I looked at my path, it was mad love. To the I, divine. To that path. To the path. To the path. And because it was mad love, I took that uncalculated risk. Thankfully, when I landed up there, my risk worked in my favor. Right, okay. The eye-opener was fantastic. If it wasn't, I still wouldn't have regretted. Because How old I was were you then? 21. Wow. Okay. Because I was still true to my calling then. Right. 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 और इसलिए घर से निकलिए, अपने शेल से निकलिए, लेकिन साथ ही साथ थोड़ा कैलकुलेटेड रिस्क लेके निकलिए क्योंकि लव ब्लाइंड होता है, मैरिज आय ओपनर होता है, आय ओपनर के बाद रिग्रेट नहीं होए, इसलिए थोड़ा सा कैलकुलेटेड रिस्क लीजिए। Well, at 21 there must have been a little adjustment issues in the ashram because yeah they were yeah 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 ashram में आप any one little thing you want to share with us Punita ji is on top of my case today. <laughs> opening, no, up, opening, up, <laughs> yeah, opening up all my secrets from the Pandora's box. Bole, Guruji, kya hua tha you, have tha bhi you have a choice to say no. <laughs> oh, I'm just joking, ma'am. I'm just loving this conversation. No. She's such an amazing personality. Loud round of applause oh. for her, guys. Such Please. a person to talk to, isn't it? I'm just loving this. <laughs> 
please. <laughs> so, uh, when I came here to the ashram, क्या होता है ना जैसे मैंने पहले बोला प्यार होता है तो सब चल जाता है और जब सच्चाइया दिखने लगती है तो पता लगता है अरे ये तो पहले दी सोचा था सो आई जस्ट जम टेन आई केम टू दी आश्रम वी हैव टू वेक अप अराउंड थ्री हाफ थ्री इन द मॉर्निंग एंड दैट वॉज इन द बिग डील बिकॉज आई वॉज यूज टू वेकिंग अप अर्ली इन द मॉर्निंग वेन डिड यू स्लीप वेन डू आई स्लीप Oh, when did I sleep did, then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, around ten, quarter past ten. Not too bad. So about five hours. So about five hours. Sometimes eleven, half eleven, based on the day, but approximately like ten, quarter past ten. So sleeping, when getting up was not an issue. It was like cakewalk. Was a part of life. The first thing came was sharing physical space mm, with a stranger. With eighty strangers, madam. <laughs> शादी होती है तो एक होता है एक इधर अस्सी लोग एंड वी डोंट हैव एनी स्पेस वी जस्ट हेड वन हॉल लाइक अ डॉम डॉम एंड दिस डॉमेट्री हैड एटी गाइस लाइंग बग्स टू नीच आदर एंड वी हैड टू जोन्स टू जोन्स इन दिस हॉल वन वाज कॉल्ड द फेनेटिक जोन ओके एंड द अदर वाज कॉल्ड द नॉन फेनेटिक जोन आई वाज अ डाइ हार्ड फेनेटिक ओके Because all those who needed fans were called fanatics, <laughs> and all those who didn't need fans were called non-fanatics. And Mumbai, you know how humid Mumbai is. Yes. So I was a die-hard fanatic. <laughs> so sleeping under this fan next to sixty other guys at my side, some used to ride Harley Davidsons in the night. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like insane noise by their snoring. That wasn't easy, but this was still okay. But the worst was. I was a pampered boy. I never had anything in my life to eat unless it was according to my dictates. Ah. If I told my mom and she didn't cook what I wanted, I never ate it in my life till when I was 21. Never, not once. Not once in my 21 years did I eat anything that was made by them but wasn't of my choice. Pampered to the core. and here i come to the ashram community kitchen mein banaya hua 100 logon ka khana no choice mm. no choice and we didn't have much then so the kitchen in charge would bring all kinds of vegetables that were leftovers har roz do sabji banti thi dopahar mein aalu aur bhopla exotic vegetables <laughs> Exotic vegetables, alu or bhopla. Gosh, I must tell you, tabi kabi kabi yad aata tha. Yad a gaya mujko guzra zamana, khushbu bhi ni bhi ni, zai ka shahana. Indana ghi. <laughs> This was an advert for Indana ghi when I was growing up, and I was remembering, oh man, I just landed up here. But I'll tell you, in in that journey. and this is something that i also want to share with all of you what i learned in those years mm. those were the formative years of my monkhood and i learned one thing very crucial and i believe strongly that it will be help you immensely in your lives and whatever journey you've taken up for yourselves all the distractions we see on our path are only because our eyes are not fixed on our purpose and our goal right so if anything that i feel is inconvenient is because my eyes are wavering away from what i've come here for mm. if i am here for a purpose and my mission my eyes my in- concentration my focus is completely on what i'm meant to get then i'm going to be able to handle those inconveniences are inconveniences kiski life mein nahi hoti hai dosto bilkul is there any any time in our life that we won't have inconveniences there will always be some problems there will always be some inconvenience always how many we have problems in your life everyone yeah. how many of you want a solution for problems in your life take up your smartphones guys <laughs> go to your wallpaper settings change your home screen and your lock screen uh, wallpaper to the picture of your spouse if you're married and to the picture of your boyfriend or girlfriend if you're not married <laughs> If you're in a relationship, and whenever you have a big challenge like my food, my sharing space, just pick up your phone and look at it like this. 
and say to yourself if i can handle this i can handle any <laughs> damn thing in my life <laughs> well done thank you <laughs> just joking guys just joking so okay. the point is challenges problems distractions will go to the side when the tension is on what we are meant to achieve challenges distractions will seem very prominent when our eyes are off our goal that's what i kept Maybe. aligning myself with and inconveniences just melted away withered away and everything became such a part of life such a joyous life today even the bhopla and the aloo <laughs> <laughs> no thank you um you know you so we were at the point where you said that for your own spiritual growth you embraced monkhood and you started your journey then a difficult one which you well with gratitude and humility you embraced that too and the, so a lot of the audience here they love you because what they've said is that you bring things across in such a simple practical way you really make spirituality if you want to call it accessible right and i want to come to this book now so energize your mind we are i would say living in a need of anxiety right and um, with the pandemic it's really got accelerated um a guru i would have thought would actually say now you have in your um, exercises spoken about meditation also but there are a lot of other small practical nuggets and coming to emotional well-being what you speak about emotional agility right the importance of i mean i remember the three things you said feel deal and heal would you like to share a little bit about this about why it's important to become aware and express our emotions and how to use them in a constructive way for our growth then thank you very much yeah. again for that question uh years ago one of my mentor he told me about what albert einstein once said mm. he said the sign of a genius is not in making simple things complicated it's in making complicated things simple, simple yes. right and far from genius but learning to follow the genius like albert einstein i mean to put things in a complicated jargon you have to hold yourself back when you can say it right <laughs> but to put things in a very simple manner where it's relatable contemporary doable is something that i felt is so so crucial because it touches a chord strikes a chord in your soul goes there and inspires you to take some action so that's probably why i just try and make it as simple as i can but how does one really get to that emotional agility emotional well being it's such a big thing isn't it john milton said the mind by itself is a place it can turn heaven into hell and hell into heaven yeah how many of you have had this experience that you were in the best surrounding but somebody really trashed you by insulting you and the best surrounding was a cause of pain thank you and how many of you have this experience that you were in the worst possible surrounding but with the best people whom you love and the experience was like fantabulous and what was doing it the place no the mind and which is why more important than our ability is the stability of our mind mm. we focus so much on our abilities that we forget that we need to bring our stability to our mind and here's what i often say ladies and gentlemen how much is this phone how how much how 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 heavy is this phone 100 150 200 grams, grams. right if i hold this phone on my palm for like 5 minutes i could probably do it right mm. if i hold it on my palm like this for the rest of the session is going to start heavy. hurting my wrist yeah if i hold this palm like this exactly like this for the rest of the day my hand probably starts getting a little wobbly a little shaky my wrist starts getting numb imagine if i hold this phone for the rest of the week my wrist will probably start paralyzing is it the weight of the phone or how long am i holding it how long you're holding it how long am i holding it right now imagine if i could just and i i don't have a choice imagine if i don't have a choice but to hold this phone that's life guys we wouldn't have a choice but to hold a lot in here do we have a choice when we live out there in the real world we wouldn't have a choice i don't have a choice this phone is thrust on my palm 
imposed at times, forced at times. Imagine if every now and then I could just take this phone off a little bit. Wouldn't my wrist feel a little better? And yeah. then I can pull it up back again and hold it and carry it. Imagine if there was another hand that came from bottom while I was holding and it supports my palm. Wouldn't my palm feel a little better? Yeah. That's exactly what Energize Your Mind is about. Our anxieties, our pressures, our deadlines. How many of you had to meet up with a deadline? Thank you. What a word, isn't it? Deadline. <laughs> By the time you cross it, you know what happens to us. We are dead. Has anybody ever called it a lifeline? <laughs> sir, lifeline is 6 months. Who says, sir, 6 months is coming to deadline. Aa hai. Any of you been victims of workplace politics, guys? Some people are saying, sir, how do you get out of your hands? The person who is sitting in the bagel is sitting in the bagel. You know what I mean? So much we have to go through and carry it in our heads. Yeah. How many of you have mortgages, guys? Thank you. Any EMIs to pay? Financial liabilities? Thank you. Children to take care of? Thank you. Children to get married? Thank you. Ill patients at home? Thank you. Challenged children at home? Okay. We live in the bloody real world. Yeah. And this is what's going to happen, the phone. And imagine what it's doing to our emotional self, internally. Where is emotional well-being with this constant triggers and stimuli? We live in a world where every moment there is a stimulus, every moment there is a trigger, every moment there is a cause, every moment there is a reason to be bothered. Will there be ever a single day in our lives that there's no trigger, no cause, no reason for being disturbed? Not a single bloody day in our life. I was walking on Oxford Street in London and I saw a guy wearing a t-shirt. It said, do not disturb. And underneath large font, it said, already disturbed. <laughs> I mean, what will you disturb? Why are you taking it first? How much will you disturb it? How much will you disturb it? Emotional well-being is the process of every now and then taking the phone off. Hmm. Don't aim for taking off the phone permanently. It doesn't happen. All these promises that are given to you, detox and all that stuff doesn't work. It's all temporary and it's okay if it's temporary. Har kuch samay mein nikaliye, haat halka lagega, usse bhi better. Kisi ka haat yaha niche le le ye bas. Hai na? Agar haat ho jai support. Support. Emotional support, mental support, spiritual support. What you have to go through becomes slightly easier. Gar tum saath ho. Agar koi saath mein ho na ji, safar kar jayega. Emotional well-being is not about being well forever. Emotional well-being is working on our well-being moment by moment, day by day, week by week. We are going to feel what we feel. It's all right. Right. We're going to feel low, it's all right. If I throw this phone down, Whoa. don't worry, it's mine. <laughs> Shall I do it again? No, 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 it's okay, it's okay, fine, thank you. <laughs> Everybody's concerned more about my phone than I am. Kuch hota hai phone ko? Kuch nahi na? Aap mein se ek ko lekar patku hai sa? We feel, I can, I can call all kinds of swear words to this phone. Does it get hurt? I call you swear words, how do you feel? We feel guys, it's okay to feel, we are human beings, we will feel. And when you feel, the better I can describe to a doctor how I feel, the better the doctor can diagnose the situation to give me treatment. Right. If I go and say, doctor, I have headache. Well, why, uh, anything else, no, doctor, I have headache. Do you feel nausea, doctor, I have headache. Do you have fever, doctor, I have headache. Do you feel body ache? No, doctor, I have headache. Are you all bold, my brother? How do I give the drug? One lady went to a doctor and the doctor said, How's your headache, madam? She said, He's out of town. You know, when you go to a doctor, it's very important to describe your symptoms. Right. So when you feel angry, don't just say, I'm angry. Yeah. Try to decode what shade of anger are you? Am I annoyed? Am I upset? Am I irritated? Am I frustrated? Am I anxious? Because if you don't know the 
what's the finer nuances you don't know what to address right so that's the feel part after the feel part comes the, the deal. deal part huh. and what's the deal part the deal part is only when i know what is that shade then can i address it right only when the doctor knows with the headache there's a fever there's nausea and there's chills maybe it's dengue or malaria right only when i know what exact feeling i'm going through can i then look for a possible solution to it emotional resilience yeah and then when i deal with it the next part obviously is healing mm. dealing with this is now and here healing is a life's journey right because there's a lot of vestiges that are left hamare sath jo jo hota hai na sab clear nahi hota hai dosto agar main aap se ek photo le lu na yahan pe aur phir usko delete karu aur mere phone se permanently delete kar du wo chala jayega lekin jo mere yahan pe photos li ja rahi hai na zindagi ki koi aisa delete button nahi jo pura delete kar deta hai koi delete button nahi hota so how what would you suggest for a deeper healing yes i would suggest healing is a process right it is not an event it's a journey right, right. dealing can be an event it's here yeah, and yeah, now yeah, yeah. like wedding is an event yes marriage is a journey yeah getting getting a degree is an event career is a journey right uh similarly dealing with a problem is an event but healing is a journey and trust me it takes time healing takes time because it leaves those subtle vestiges inside of us for instance something happened forgiveness i may say i let go but i can't forget i'm carrying it with me it's like that phone constantly carrying it for my lifetime when i see that individual it comes back to me and sometimes it just comes back so vehemently it's as I, raw as it was when it happened right? yeah and i thought that i was done with it but it comes back so one thing i often say is this how many of you are gym goers here oh brilliant how many of you do any sort of exercise at all oh wow a very very fit Fish conscious audience yes. here that's amazing maine apne ek dost that's ko that's jlf for you oh lovely i'm i'm enjoying <laughs> jlf by the way loud round for jlf guys i'm enjoying this this is phenomenal this is like what energy yes make some noise guys for the jlf energy come on lovely 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 that's lovely that's lovely what an energy oh mere ek dost ka itna bada pet bahar aaya maine usko bola bhai tu teri tond kam kar वजन कम कर वो मुझे बोला वजन कम करके क्या करना है वजन कम करके क्या करना है आखिर सबको एक दिन मरना है इसलिए अभी जो भी खाना है खा लो मेरे दोस्त क्योंकि अगले जन्म में फिर तीन किलो से ही शुरू करना है आई सेट दिस गाय डिजर्व अ वैक आई एम जिम गोवर टू ओ ये आश्रम आई हैव जिम माई ओन जिम इन दी आश्रम मैम लुक एट आई बिल्ट आई एम <laughs> oh good this week. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, very un- unorthodox monk. <laughs> Unconventional monk. So when you go to a gym, <laughs> fitness is about three things, isn't it? One is about good nutrition. Second is about good sleep mm. and third is about good exercise. And these three put together improves your metabolism. Right. Fitness is about metabolism, not looks. fitness is not about the shape of the body it's about how your metabolism is patthar khaya hajam ho gaya aur phir bhi chal raha hai enviable metabolism that guys who can digest a stone and not put any you know any floats around their belly like uttar pradesh and you know north india is good south india is also good chatisgarh madhya pradesh is like big state central states are like big like this around you know so our physical metabolism is built by these three things right similarly we have to have mental metabolism as well is there a gym where we can go who's advising people about the right nutrition for the mind everybody is talking about nutrition for fitness for the body who in the world is advising people about nutrition for the mind right who in the world is advising people of sleep sleep apnea snoring sleep devices do this do this sleep psychology sleep techniques ruckus all over the world who's talking about helping people make their mind sleep hmm. i'm sleeping in the void and my mind cannot sleep 
I cannot get any rest for my mind. I'm I tossing and turning off. in my bed. I can't switch, switch off. off. Yes. Who's talking about how to put the mind to rest? And we go to the gyms and we take all kinds of exercise regimens for ourselves to get fit. Who is talking about exercise for the mind? So which is precisely why healing is a journey, fitness is a journey. Joining the gym is an event. True. Continuing on consistently is a journey. So look at the nutrition for your mind, the content you read, the content you watch, the guys you hang out with, because that's what's going in as the nutrition for your mind. Look at the state of your rest, whether it's meditation, whether it's mindfulness, whether it's unwinding to music, whatever it is that works for you. Take some time off. Don't carry this all the time. Take some time off to put it aside so it rests. It won't rejuvenate unless it rests. If your body doesn't rejuvenate unless it is, how will your mind feel rejuvenated unless it rests? And last but not the least, most certainly join a gym for the mind, guys. Because only the mind that is actively involved in exercise will stay fit and in shape. And that's precisely where exercising your mind muscles by creativity, innovation, passion, giving yourself to something creative, will put it all together. Meditation, creativity, innovation, content, company, all of this put together is your healing journey for the rest of your life. Yeah. Thank you. We have a little time left. We will go in for Q&A, but very quickly, and we'll have to be a little short with this. You've been talking so much about this, so, and you also, in your podcast, talk about social media, right. the addiction of that. I don't want to go into the addiction aspect. I just want to talk about the importance, I mean, because I work a lot with young people, the importance of consent, right? Uh, we have so many of these apps, swipe right, swipe left, swipe whatever. But I still feel we live in a very patriarchal society where the male dominates, the female thinks she has to, you dominate, I comply, I don't know. I just want you, uh, because they will take your words and take it to the heart. Sure. The importance of consent with whoever you're trying to connect with, for however, however long, but respecting that human being as divine as you are. You know, when we say 100%. Namaste, it's, I bow to the divine in you. So just a little bit on consent. 100%, I can't agree anymore. I can't agree more to what you're saying. I think we live in a world where we are dealing with human beings. And I feel when we bring in the concept of dealing with human beings, other boundaries have to melt away. And a lot of times boundaries come into picture. And when boundaries come into picture, there is dominance, there is control, there is dominion. Because one sees, another, one sees oneself as superior over the other. What that boundary is could be so many varieties of boundaries, right? Everyone has a different, Everyone has yeah, a different ideology of, of what that boundary is. But taking that boundary as the identity, that one dominates over the other. Can we just bloody stop doing that? And can we start respecting people not by boundaries, but by them being as human beings? और इसीलिए मैं कई बार कहता हूँ इंसान ना जी इंसान ना घर घर में पैदा होता है इंसानियत कहीं कहीं पैदा होती है बस राइट एंड वी हैव टू गो नॉट बाय ह्यूमन बट बाय ह्यूमैनिटी ह्यूमैनिटी यस एंड व्हिच इज व्हाई स्टार्ट रिस्पेक्टिंग ट्रस्ट रिस्पेक्टिंग पीपल स्पेस स्टार्ट रिस्पेक्टिंग पीपल्स प्रायोरिटीज ट्रीट अदर्स विद डिग्निटी दे डिजर्व दैट डिग्निटी दे डिजर्व दैट रिस्पेक्ट And I, I often say, what Susie, what Susie says of Sally, says more of Susie than Sally. Absolutely right. right. Absolutely. And therefore, what people are doing to others are not talking of others as low or big, but talking about their own restricted, constricted, narrow mindsets. Right. And I think it's high time that we rise above these things and have an open world. where we live as a humanity where boundaries melt away and we are willing to respect each other's rights each other's dignity and give that space to each other too so thank, you. thank you and on that we are opening it up there's 5 minutes for questions so if we could just have three or four questions first and then 
God, you will answer it. Sure, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, that lady there who's flapping her hand. First of all, Guruji, I'd like to thank you. It's thank my you. birthday today. Oh, we should suck <laughs> very happy <laughs> birthday. Make some noise for this lady here for her birthday, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. And <laughs> my question is that <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. Oh, I can see that. Thank you. <laughs> my question is that sometimes uh, you said that to, you know, unwind, we can do creativity and everything. And sometimes even with the creative ideas and after a productive day, the mind is just filled with so many to-do lists and yes. what I can do the next day. Right, right. And I'm not able to sleep right. because no, of that. No, no, no. You know what I said? Unwind is not with creativity. That's the exercise part. Okay. Unwind is with meditation, mindfulness. Because with creativity and to-do list, the mind is not going to relax because a hundred more ideas will keep coming. Yes. And you can't settle the mind down. So unwinding is a different space. And creativity is a different space. Nutrition for the mind is content you consume. Unwinding is meditation, mindfulness, music, whatever it is. And exercise is creativity and innovation. All right? Oh, there's a little Thank boy you. right at the back. All right. School boy. Yeah, Can oh, we hear oh, you? lovely. Can you kindly first tell us what your name is and which grade are you in, young man? Sir, Sir Krish, class 9th. Oh, oh, lovely. Sir, in one of your interviews, you spoke about not giving in to the conformity. But as a teenager, every now and then, I am asked to conform to society on pretext of we would guide you. How do I stand my grounds and find and live my purpose in this world? Oh, wow. wow. Noise, guys. Not just applause. Loud noise for this gentleman here. Whoa. What a question that is. That's a that pretty is. universal question. What a Absolutely. question that is. Right? That I've spoken, I've many times spoken about this, that we shouldn't conform to the social standards of what is successful. In the noise of all the apparent good advice even, we shouldn't forget our own voice. There's too much noise out there. Even in the name of good counsel, there's so much noise and our own little voice gets drowned in that noise. And rather than following what our voice is saying, we end up doing what everybody else is saying. So this gentleman's question is so good. How do I stand my ground and be myself, right? Uh, here's how I look at it. We live in the real world. And in the real world, we have real needs. And sometimes when, become, when we become a non-conformist, being a non-conformist is a very long journey. It's the road less traveled. Being a conformist has taken the beaten path. So when you take the beaten path, there's some surety chalega, itta to milega, ye to ho jayega, certain evo. But when you take the road less traveled, there's a big risk. Imagine what kind of a non-conformist, an HP executive engineer, taking, leaving everything and taking this up. What level of non-conformism, but what a risk as well. Correct? So which is why, here's what I usually say. Walk the beaten path to make your money so you can settle. Because that takes a long time unless you're blessed and lucky and have some good luck or whatever you call it. Take the beaten path to settle. While you walk the beaten path, keep exploring the road less traveled, which is your voice by the side, so that you don't give it up. Don't stop it, just pause it. Right. And once you kind of settle a little bit, then slowly start paying more attention to this side, because then the risks are minimized. When your family, for instance, sees that he's now taking a path which is road less traveled, you can imagine the anxiety they go through. But when they see, kya re, kar rahe, ye bhi ho rahe, normal hai hamara bachcha. Unko kya pata, andar se atrang hai. Right. Bahar se to normal lag raha hai ekdam. But andar se atrang kaam karte rehna chahi andar se. Apni voice ko follow karte rehna chahi. Ek din aayega, apna bhi time aayega. Jab hum khade rehe ke, करके दिखाएंगे और मचा डालेंगे। Wow, guys, I don't think we have time for more questions. We have to wrap up now, but I have to just, Gorji, for the best non-conformist monk that all of us love so deeply. Thank you for this. It's been such a. He will be doing a book signing, so you can take your books and whatever questions you can, you can do it on a one-on-one. But let's give him a big round of applause first.